My name is George Leonard and I'm Chief Scientist for Ocean Conservancy. Mm -hmm. Ocean Conservancy is a national ocean conservation organization and we work around the U.S. and around the world on protecting ocean habitats. Um, have you noticed that the warmer climate has been affecting the marine life and oceans? Yeah, there's no question that climate change is happening here in California, as we mm -hmm. all know, um, but it's also happening in a major way in the oceans. Um, there's a whole host of ways that climate change is impacting the oceans, but its fundamental driver is essentially the same as what's happening on land, which is the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's driving warmer temperatures, and then it's driving a whole host of changes in ocean chemistry um, and other factors that are impacting the marine life, both here in the Monterey Bay, but up and down the California coast, and even across the entire California current ecosystem, which basically runs from the Mexico border all the way uh -huh. to Canada. Um, is there any species in particular that you've seen has been greatly affected more than another species? Well, I think there's a whole list of species that we could talk about. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you're seeing here locally in, uh, in Monterey um, is right now we're having a major diatom bloom. We're having a, essentially a red tide event um, from a mm -hmm. species called Pseudonychia, uh, which pr produces domo domoic acid, um, which influences a number of species at the bottom of the food web, mm -hmm. including small filter feeding fish, um, and, uh, and a host of other filter feeders like mussels and clams and oysters. And that event, there's a big question, is that being driven by climate? But we know that red tide blooms are driven by increases in water temperature and increases in nutrients. Mm -hmm. And the waters offshore in Santa Cruz here uh, are the warmest they've been in a long time. So there's a real correlation between uh -huh. that um, and those species. So have you seen any of these patterns before or is this the first time? you've seen anything like this? Well, one of the things that's interesting about climate change in the ocean is scientists are sort of predicting the future based on what we've seen in the past and what mm -hmm. we know drives different species um, and different interactions. And so in the case, again, of the diatom bloom, um, we know a lot about how that event happens. Mm -hmm. And then we know a lot about, about how climate is now impacting the fundamental drivers of the system. Yeah. And so we're sort of combining um, the two of them together. Mm -hmm. um, another good example is um, there have been uh, major uh, die-offs of sea lions recently. Mm -hmm. It's been wow. in the news um, up and down the coast and there's some question again about what's driving that but it seems to be a lot of the, especially the young pups are starving um, mm -hmm. because they're food stressed and one of the reasons they're food stressed is there's been a big reduction in sardines um, and sardines are an important part of the ecosystem mm -hmm. here uh, and there's been sort of a eight to ten year decline in the sardine population so it seems like warmer waters different uh, patterns mm -hmm. in circulation are sort of undercutting the base of the food web yeah. and that's having ripple effects kind of up the food web many people don't know much of the fish that we find in the in the supermarket actually isn't from here mm -hmm. something like 80 percent of the fish that we eat in the u.s is caught from overseas but there are lots of local fisheries, um, local salmon, halibut, um, squid, a number of species that we do eat uh, here that, that come from here. Um, it's very difficult to predict exactly how the local populations of these fish, fish are gonna be impacted by climate change. But what we do know from recent science that's been released is that fish are on the move. So as water is warming, fish are following the cool water to try to get out of the way. And what that generally means is that fish are moving toward the poles um, and, uh, and they're often moving into deeper water. So it's difficult to say, you know, what's going to happen with the salmon, what's going to happen um, with the halibut, but it's pretty clear that the local fishermen that are dependent on those, those species are probably going to have to track them and follow them elsewhere if they want to catch them. Okay. At some point, if the fish move too far out of the region, it doesn't make sense for them to, to try to catch mm -hmm. them anymore. But there's no question that fisheries are, are, are impacted by climate. Um, those, those impacts will get larger okay. um, and, uh, and changes afoot for sure in the, in the fishing industry. So could you tell us more about the salmon runs and spawning the streams? Sure. So there's really kind of two types of fish out there. Mm -hmm. There are those fish that live in the ocean their whole lives, and then there are those fish that spend part of their life in the ocean and part of their life in freshwater streams. Mm -hmm salmon is a great example of this um, and those species are highly dependent on good habitats in the stream which is usually driven by the presence of a habitat itself um, but also by the quality of the water in the stream and that's how much water is in the stream and how cold the water is so if you're a salmon you want the stream to have a lot of water in it and you mm -hmm. want it to be cold and chilly both of those things are changing in large measure because of climate change 
we're in a drastic drought right now, which means there's very little stream flow. There's very little fresh water in any of these streams, mm -hmm. and that's directly impacting the small juvenile fry or the small fish. At the same time, the water that is in the stream is warmer, and therefore it's a lot um, a, a, a less uh, ha habitable habitat. Mm -hmm. um, so the issue of what's going to happen with our salmon is very much uh, on the mind, I think, of local fishermen, but it's also on the mind of our elected officials in Sacramento. Um, mm -hmm. Just next month, there's going to be a special hearing on how salmon and other what are called anadromous fish um, are being impacted by climate change because, because, um, because the regulators and our elected officials recognize mm -hmm. that, that these species are going to be under increasing threat. So we'd like to hear a little bit about how this is going to be affecting tourism in Santa Cruz. So I think there's probably a number of different ways that, that climate change is going to impact um, tourism. Maybe some mm -hmm. are good, good and some are bad. I'm originally from the East Coast, and so I spend my summers on the East Coast where it's hot at the beach. Mm -hmm. And when I came to California 20 years ago and I would come to the beach, it was always cold and it was mm -hmm. always foggy. And I would always have to wear a sweater when I would yeah. go to the beach. And now what's happening 20, 25 years later is you can often go to the beach and it's actually warm at the beach. There's much less fog. You can go in a t-shirt and shorts and not be cold. Mm -hmm. And so I think climate change is, is, is actually making that piece of the coast right along the ocean actually warmer and more habitable for people who want to come and enjoy the beach. What that's doing is it's probably driving more people to the beach, particularly as the inland areas go from being warm to being really, really hot. Um, if it's 110 degrees in Sacramento, you want to get to the coast. So I suspect we will see more people in Santa Cruz. And then the question is, what are the implications uh, mm -hmm. for that, for the ocean? Um, Save Our Shores, a local organization here in Santa Cruz, does a lot of beach cleanup work. And they do that because people tend to leave their materials and their wrappers and their garbage behind when they mm -hmm. come. And so they're finding more and more garbage on the beach because more and more people are coming to the beach. Yeah. So that's a potential negative impact, I think, mm -hmm. on the environment even though uh, the beaches are becoming sort of a, a warmer place to, to mm -hmm. come. So another way that uh, climate change may be impacting tourism is through our whale watching um, mm -hmm. tours that are happening here. As, as we know, California, uh, and particularly the Monterey Bay, is, is in a tremendous place um, for, for people to see a whole host of marine mammals, everything from mm -hmm. sea lions to whales to sea otters, um, and the list really goes on and on. It's difficult to predict, again, how climate change is going to impact that, mm -hmm. but I suspect that those patterns will change. Um, right now, one of the things that's happened in the last year or so is we've actually seen an increase in marine mammals in the Bay, which mm -hmm. seems to be, be associated with increases in food, um, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive when I said earlier that, mm -hmm. that the base of the food web seems to be declining um, kind of overall. And scientists still don't quite understand what's happening, but they think it has to do with, um, with the, the prey um, schooling and moving into different parts of the bay. And as they respond to climate, it actually may make them more available for marine mammals, like whales, which will track the food source. And so you can see these really complicated um, uh, interactions that are happening as, as a result of a, mm -hmm. of a changing ocean. Um, so maybe in the short run, it, it, it will make uh, whale watching more pleasant. There'll be more whales to see. In the long run, though, I think we, we shouldn't expect that the climate will be good for the top of the food chain. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing all your information. Sure, happy yeah. to help out. Um, yeah. Santa Cruz is a great place. We, have, we live in a wonderful spot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, climate change is coming. It's impacting the land. It's been impacting the ocean. Yeah. And the kind of work you're doing to, to get everybody to pay attention to that is, is really needed. So thanks yeah. for including Thank me. Thank you.